Spotfire as a BI organization. We term Spotfire as a BI business intelligence tool. Okay, so any for any organization, BI intelli uh, business intelligence plays a very important role. It enables uh, companies' own data to be completely utilized for its own benefit, so that uh, it can stay in the competition from its uh, competitors, and also it enables uh, an organization, business intelligence in particular, enables any organization to grow in future, to expand itself, okay, allowing the organization process to make uh, wise decisions and the predict future analysis, future, th future uh, challenges they're going to face. So uh, this is how we define BI, a business intelligence uh, for any organization. Fine. So keeping this business definition apart, if we have to technically drive a business intelligence, so business intelligence uh, is nothing but uh, we gather data in the different forms within an organization or if it has to be outside of the organization irrespective of whatever the form the data is in. When I say uh, the different forms of data, it can be can be there in as, as simple as in a text file or an Excel file to as complex as a SAP system, an ERP system. So irrespective of where the data is, we gather all this data of an organization and then we take that into a single place, a single place, a single source of truth, to create a single source of truth. So this single place can be termed as a data warehouse or a data mart or a various operational data center or a data, a data center simply. So here while uh, migrating this data, the integration services, the integration services vertical of BA business intelligence, the first part comes into play. So the integration services enable us to gather this data and put it into one place. Okay, fine. So once we have data here, the next vertical of the VA starts, that is reporting this data, making it useful for the client. So here we have various uh, methods and technologies uh, which we can leverage to get the best visualization, the best representation of the data. So this is a reporting session of uh, reporting part of business intelligence. So once we have reports in place and uh, data can be analyzed or viewed by the client, then the next advanced part of business intelligence that is analysis. So stuff like uh, mining data and then uh, aggregating data into OLAP cubes, cubes or uh, aggregation tables. Then with this we go to the next level of uh, cleansing data and then uh, getting patterns out of data. So this is analysis services. Now where does, uh, these are the three, so to put it into one line, uh, the, so these are the three components of a business, uh, namely uh, integration services, reporting services and uh, analysis services. Where does uh, Spotfire uh, fit into these three? So Spotfire is a, Spotfire fits under this reporting vertical, so it's a reporting tool. But uh, can we call Spotfire as just a reporting tool like uh, SSRS? SSRS is a uh, reporting tool from MSBI, Microsoft Business Intelligence. And uh, the other uh, similar tool we have here is MicroStrategy, which is also a reporting tool from MicroStrategy organization. Okay, so can we call Spotfire as just a reporting tool like this SSRS and MicroStrategy? No. So the answer is definitely no. Spotfire is just not a reporting tool. It is uh, more than that. So if you have to define a Spotfire, so the, my best definition would be Spotfire is a statistical tool with analytical capabilities built on in-memory engine, built with uh, in-memory architecture. Okay, okay. now uh, sure we will understand uh, why we have termed it as a statistical tool and what our uh, analytical capabilities it has and what is that in-memory architecture. Okay, so we can't complete Spotify definition without uh, using these three terminologies. Okay, statistical, analytical and in-memory architecture. Okay, so let's talk about uh, statistical capabilities. Okay, so statistical capabilities, so to start with statistics, Statistics is, uh, if you have to define statistics, uh, it is nothing but uh, gathering data and then perceiving it and then representing it. Representing it in a much advanced, ranging from basic to the advanced, so that uh, user can make a correlation, correlation among the entities, maybe similar or uh, dissimilar entities, and then find 
patterns among the data. So this uh, statistics is not new in the industry, so it's there right from the evolution of mathematics. But these tools now make it more simpler, the statistical concepts where uh, user, the developer or the end user may not have to actually know the all the principles of the statistics uh, he's gonna view, but still with the capabilities of the tool and the flexibility, we can very much evolve the statistical graphs with much ease and minimal knowledge of the statistical concepts. Okay, so you see this first two graphs, uh, you can see the minimized movement, okay. These two are uh, scatter plots, scatter plots in general called and which are very much supported by Spotify too. So this is a representation of uh, our data points scattered across the panel X and Y. Okay, so you see the pattern here, uh, I can see that there is a standard declination in the trend. So this is something which I am not getting as a single line by the data itself. So here I am drawing a conclusion that there I see a decline. So this line is generated virtually, this is not directly generated by the data. This is something using statistics we create this line. Okay and the red spots you see, those are the actual data, the actual data being uh, scattered here in this plane. Okay, so the next graph you see where we don't, we didn't draw a line, we are leaving it to the client or the customer to decide. So here we have represented the data points scattered. Okay, so this will give us a thought, a impression that there is an, at a very top level, the graph has started and then, then onwards it started declining declining to a point and from there it again started inclining. Okay, so the point where uh, we see inclination and declination meet, there we have a lot of density. Okay, so it means for most of the time the data patterns uh, remained at the bottom, bottom of my complete uh, incline to incline curvature. This is something, a statistical terminology which uh, if we have to do on paper, uh, takes a lot of uh, efforts with uh, advent of the tools. Uh, all we have to have is uh, data in place for this and then we are uh, just ready uh, to go and show it on the spot file windows. Okay, so another uh, statistical representation of the data. So here, uh, are you back uh, where what is our thing? So as I told you the definition of a spot fire, if I have to precisely define a spot fire tool, it is a statistical analytical tool with in-memory architecture. So I am covering the statistical features, okay, uh, the statistical features of uh, spot fire. There are many statistical graphs which we will be covering uh, inside uh, as we progress in our course, but this is one of the interesting uh, a statistical representation which I want to bring up front so that uh, you will have an idea of how this tool is going to be, how advanced it's going to be. Okay, this tool. Okay, this is called a heat map. So here uh, there, are, there are two primary dimensions which we have to see. Okay, so here you see the tile representation. So these are, so this is a tile representation. So here we are having this uh, map with uh, uh, with the population and then the mortality rate, mortality rate, uh, the birth, uh, survival of the birth rate, okay, the, the people who live for a long term, okay. So, the higher the tile, the, the bigger the tile, the more the population is. So, you see this California has more population, okay, Miami has little less population. So, the more the uh, size of the tile, the higher the population and then we have a mortality rate. So mortality rate, uh, so if you see this legend, so the, the bright red, more the bright red, the highest the mortality rate. And towards the blue, we have less mortality rate. People die at the age of 36 only here. We have people live at still 75. Okay, so if we see uh, New Mexico, New Mexico got high mortality rate. Okay but the population is less because the tile is small but the color is bright that which means the mortality rate is more. if you see florida it has somewhat uh, average 
population and uh, average mortality rate is because the tile compared to the overall sizes it is medium and the color density we see it's somewhat standing with the middle okay so this is uh, how we study this graph and this is we are doing two kinds of studies to different uh, entities here if you see uh, this is our statistics okay the, uh, one is uh, population which is one entity and uh, mortality rate in other entity we don't have a correlation between we, we don't have direct relation between them but this graph is giving a correlation and uh, giving the end user control to compare these two in one graph with very easiness okay and make decisions okay so i have california i have a uh, huge populated state california where uh, the pop, uh, mortality rate is not very high okay so should i have to take medical take two decisions one is i have to control the population okay and the second thing is i have to improve the health situations or uh, health uh, situations of the population by investing on the healthcare okay so these two decisions i i could have made very easily with this uh, representation okay so how the tools used to be before the advent of uh, this analytical tools uh, the traditional reporting tools we have two diamond uh, ssrs or uh, micro strategy so these uh, were uh, very much uh, tabulistic representation of the data maybe here and there uh, bars and pies but mostly they used to assist day to day operations of an organization the day to day operations like uh, floor supervisation or inventory control or stock control or uh, do accounting of the production of an uh, unit okay so they were more like a static representation of the data but over ages as uh, bi is evolving the reporting part is also evolving along in it, in it. Uh, from the two dimensional representation of data uh, we have uh, now got into a much advanced analytical platform so no no more we can call this as the reporting platforms color is a mortality here uh, and uh, size is a population and uh, this is uh, if you can see there is a third dimension also that is uh, the region so this graph is uh, completely divided by region so you see uh, south antarctic uh, specific north new england modern atlantica east asia atlantica okay so this is uh, divided by regions so like this we can have multiple dimensions at a time so this is how uh, this is where i am comparing uh, the uh, traditional approach of representation uh, where we have uh, table graphs or bar graphs or pie graphs compared to the statistical graphs the, you know the more uh, accurate uh, advanced statistical graphs now so th this is evolution of uh, reporting from analytics so no, no more we have to call this reporting it has to be called as analytical tools okay so the next part is uh, analytical visualizations so here i am making it to reference to the heat chart is because the concentration of the colors okay so if we see the high the thicker the concentration of the color we define it by the more mortality rate as the concentration of the color intensity of the color decreases decreases mortality rate shows a decline i mean the lesser the mortality rate okay so analytics needs a very good representations okay so when we so when i say we go to presentation they has to be very uh, light irrespective of whatever the complexity at the back end we have uh, the data model uh, or the uh, patterns or the develop visualization attributes irrespective of whatever the complexity we have the end user should feel the graph very light you should not feel the complexity else the viewability will go away the understanding capabilities of a uh, end user will be at stake so it has to be very light first thing and the second thing is the color usability uh, i mean it should be a color rich if i have to say and uh, it has to be eye catchers because when we go and uh, sell our uh, reporting solutions okay so the first thing which will client is attract to is the richness and the attractiveness of our reporting tool yeah uh, how does it make sense to the actually the whole study we have put it in and then uh, uh, the advanced graphs we have created and uh, the predictable things we have put on the 
chart is is all measured by only the look and feel of the report may not be completely yes but just to begin with to get the good impression of a client uh, so that you can have the smooth session with the client on your tool on your uh, representation very much yes is because this sets an uh, uh, a good impression to begin with okay so uh, spotfire has completely win uh, uh, has completely one on that section is because it has a very nice smooth and uh, light uh, uh, visualization so it's more of a futuristic representation okay these visualizations are very uh, very easy to build in the spot file and very quick to build so I am using these two words we just note down that uh, it is very easy and quick is because I will be discussing this uh, in the next point why they are uh, easy and smooth okay and uh, the next selling point critical point in, in uh, uh, visualizations and representation of data is a dashboard okay so dashboards can be very much uh, quickly and uh, very collaboratively constructed in Spotfire so what are these dashboards dashboards are uh, are like uh, index of a book so they give you they give you an aggregated uh, view of the entire analysis in the first glance so this uh, the dashboards will consist of uh, multiple visualizations multiple visualizations uh, and sometimes the raw data uh, the, the straight tabular data but the concept the idea behind the uh, dashboard is to give an overall a higher view of the analysis and uh, allow user and set expectations on the user how the further uh, analysis is going to be how he is going to study the, the entire analysis so they are building these dashboards and uh, analytical uh, visualizations are uh, very much uh, are the majority part of the spotfire and uh, are very much intuitive and uh, attractive in spotfire Okay, so now I said it is smooth and uh, quick. How is it possible? If you guys have worked on other reporting tools or uh, if not, so building any visualization or uh, getting data into uh, uh, a visualization is not very uh, easy. I mean, it's not very uh, less time consuming. Whereas in uh, Spotfire, it is very quick and uh, very simplistic. Why? It's all because of the in-memory architecture it is built upon. Okay, so what is this in-memory architecture? Okay, so to tell you about this in-memory architecture, first I have to discuss about the RAM capabilities we have in uh, we have on the hardware you now we have used. So before this 64-bit uh, operating systems, we had 32-bit operating systems. Okay, so 32-bit operating systems at max. Uh, allow us to use uh, 4 GB of RAM. So the tools like SSRS or MicroStrategy used to mainly rely on the cache. So to store the temporary data sets at the go, the runtime for view uh, for uh, front end uh, users. Okay. So now uh, when we had very limitation on RAM capabilities so how the uh, data representation was when we are showing something on the uh, front end to a user okay and a user uh, changes its changes the action for example uh, we are uh, showing uh, sales by year for five five years sales okay now very uh, very basic thing user want to see sales of six years so he will select another year so very simple uh, operation like this a query is run a SQL query related to that is run and then it is hit to the database which is on, on the disk and the data is brought in, brought to the client okay so on theory it is very simple now for the multiple actions of the user now the user want to see sales by territory or by uh, both year and territory combination so whatever may be the need of the client so for every action we have to fire a subsequent uh, SQL query and get data from the disk 
Okay, so here involves I.O. operations, input output operations, which are very costly. Okay, so every time we go to the disk and get the data for every post back and put it on the client. This became a biggest challenge in uh, reporting industries. Okay, so then came in memory architecture. Okay only with the advent of 64-bit uh, operating systems. So 64-bit operating systems will allow us at max to use 1 TB of RAM. So this RAM was very well used in memory architecture. So 1 TB means you can imagine uh, we can uh, get an entire data warehouse into RAM. So what is the advantage of having data in RAM? Anything which is RAM can be very quickly and easily accessed. First thing is we don't have input-output operations, uh, I/O operations which are very costly. The second thing is we don't have disk operations. We don't have to go to disk. So this is again thing. By eliminating this, we are uh, improving the improving the data management capabilities of an analytical tool. So. It's like once we have data on the front-end user, irrespective of whatever the action or whatever the need of the user, say in the example I have taken, a user wants uh, uh, sales by year, now user wants, user wants uh, sales by territory or both, or uh, he want to identify which territory has the highest sale. He want uh, all the, he want to get territories uh, ordered by the sales or the salespersons. So this changing needs of client once he has report on the front end can be met very quickly. So with just client click movements is because data is not somewhere away. It's very much in the RAM and which is very can be quickly brought into the client. So this is this is in your architecture. So now once this architecture is formed, this gives a very much uh, vital power to Spotware. So the other tools which are on the lines of this are uh, Tableau, ClickQ. Not only Tableau and ClickQ, these are new tools coming to the market. The old players like uh, SAP Business Objects, which has kept Business Object aside and then came up with HANA, H-A-N-A, written capital. So this uh, is uh, in, -memory tool, in memory tool and then uh, we have MicroStrategy Prime. They also came into this sector. Not only that, Microsoft also has come into this sector. Microsoft has this traditional MSBA. So without touching it, without uh, modifying it, it has come up with a different tool called PowerView. PowerView is also an in-memory analytical tool. So as our Spotfire is. I'll also tell you why we go with the Spotfire. Okay? So Spotfire is, uh, is a startup uh, set up in the US which was later uh, overtook by Tipco, Tipco in the year uh, 2007. So this, uh, once after they took up this uh, Tipco uh, spot fire, they have taken it to a whole level of next, uh, whole new level, okay. They have given a given spot fire uh, reporting, uh, along with the reporting uh, capabilities, scripting capabilities too, and programming language support, and a stable platform to run this uh, tool. Okay. So here, as I started with the definition of Spotfire, a statistical analytical, uh, a statistical tool uh, with uh, analytical capabilities built on in-memory architecture, I have uh, defined them. Okay, uh, so Spotfire as a startup, it was uh, developed on Linux platforms and uh, so you see Aaron and Python there. Okay, but after one, the Tipco has taken it over. It has integrated with the .NET API application user interface. Now Spotfire runs only on .NET framework. Okay, when I now when I say it runs only on .dot .NET framework, there we are setting a limitation. It is not cross-platform. Why? Because .NET is run by only Windows OS. So the limitation. Spotfire runs only on Windows operating systems. So if we have .NET on Linux systems like Mono.NET, uh, we can make Spotfire run on Linux systems also. But more precisely on Windows operating systems, mainly Windows server operating systems. Okay, it's because of the limitation of the .NET framework.
it's not the tool limitation by the way remember spotfire was originally developed on linux systems okay dot net uh, so now that now uh, that it runs on dot net framework any language or api which uh, dot net supports is directly supported by spotfire 2 okay by keeping it on dot net texture it didn't sacrifice the uh, basic uh, scripting capabilities it had the spotfire had which is uh, python it is still there. So programmers of Iron Python can still script on uh, Spotfire. But how important is it uh, scripting it on Iron Python and uh, .NET languages? Very rarely you will come to situations where we have to do this very advanced uh, scenarios. But, but most of the reporting needs, uh, uh, end user reporting needs are satisfied uh, by the tool itself. The other uh, limitation we have on the spot fire is uh, at the time of inflation or to work with spot fire we have to have an RDBMS. At the moment only two RDBMS are allowed. One is the SQL server, other is the Oracle. So don't get confused this with the RDBMS support of uh, Spotfire. Spotfire supports almost all RDBMS. But is this, is this not conflicting? Yeah. So at the time of installation, there is something called report database. So Spotfire also has to show store some of its configurations on the database. Okay. Uh, configurations like maybe as basic as the server IP and then the client credentials. So that wants left like uh, the visualization definitions to create on the spot uh, reports. So all this has to be stored which is called the report configuration data. So for this it needs a database for itself. There we have a limitation. It, will, it, it can use either Oracle or SQL Server. So once we have that in place, it can use data from any RDBMS, MySQL, Postgre, or DB2, or Teradata. Not only RDBMS, almost all kind of files uh, SAP, e, uh, not only ERPs and also big, uh, big data tools also. This has a new feature now is embedded into Spotfire. So if I have to tell you simply those are system requirements. System requirements are pointed here. So Spotfire is uh, divided into three units. The whole Spotfire is divided into three units. Spotfire Professional, the player, server. So professional is a thing which we will be working more throughout our development or throughout our training. Professional is a very important part of Spotfire. It's like heart, heart of Spotfire. This is where we do uh, designing, developing, visualizing, conceptualizing all the business uh, requirements we have and then uh, represent it to the end user. So this is uh, in development terminology it is called IDE uh, just like the Visual Studio or uh, Eclipse Clip Spear. This is, uh, to, uh, this is not something which will give to end user. This will be there with the developer or administrator. The next thing is web player. Web player, we can work without web player too, but the point is we can't show anything to the user. Whatever we develop, we have to keep it for ourselves if we have only this professional. So web player will allow us to show visualizations we have developed to end user. So this is put on a server and installed uh, with the help of IIS, Internet Information Server, guys which are familiar with uh, Windows OS will understand. Uh, Internet information services, if you don't understand also not a problem. It is a web server like Tomcat, Apache Tomcat. Uh, so this helps to uh, show, render, render uh, our visualizations in HTML format on the browsers so that uh, end user can see our visualizations. So the third component, so the uh, web player is very light and uh, very simple to install and very easy to configure. 
the uh, the third thing the uh, heaviest part and uh, mo mostly administratable part is the server uh, which doesn't have any UI uh, which doesn't uh, need any development on it uh, so this is hosted this is this is used to host uh, visualizations we have developed the professional is professional linked to server yes only till the time we deploy the developed tools into server once we deploy from professional to server the link between professional and server is gone okay so once the development is over professional is out of picture as much as out of it is we can actually uninstall this and we can still live with server and web player are tightly coupled without web player server is nothing with only just web player server uh, we can't do without server so these two once we develop and deploy into server then we view them in the web player we can have all three in one server or we can have them in three separate servers there is no limitation okay we can have uh, on one box a professional and other box a player and in the third box server and all three can communicate very easily uh, with the IP and port numbers okay uh, and again I am mean, I am uh, reinforcing. don't get confused uh, here uh, the system requirements or actual SQL server I have written is only at the time of installation once we install the uh, spot file we can't install it this to RDBMF okay any of that once we have then we have uh, uh, its support to almost every existing data point at the moment and uh, yeah so professional is also used by administrators, spot for administrators. For spot for administrators, spot for professional plays a very important role. Okay, so not only development uh, here we can uh, administrate as basic as uh, setting up users and giving them accesses uh, to advanced stuff like automating things and uh, enabling script functionalities, setting up API references everything can be done with professional so whatever uh, the development of the administration happens happens mainly through professional okay that doesn't mean that uh, no administration happens on web player and server there too it happens and there are sub there are separate uh, windows uh, uis for both the uh, player and servers through which we can do the administration but development no all the development happens only on professional okay so that is uh, more precisely on the technicalities of uh, Spotfire so there is a question for me uh, that we will be getting uh, Spotfire trial version of course very much you will get Spotfire trial version so that is only professional okay you will get professional uh, for 30 days trial from Spotfire website I will show you that link at the end of the course okay so where you can download and we can work and we can it's it's completely full this is not basic or middle or uh, not so advanced so this has everything in pro, we have everything in professional uh, which a developer needs and to work full fledgedly on Spotfire okay and uh, uh, yeah and anything anything else you want to ask on the Spotfire uh, uh, limitations or the Spotfire scope yes we can do uh, information links on Spotfire professional trial version now we will get into the demo of uh, professional okay